<laughs> Praise Lord Jesus. Now, come on, Sister Emma. You're not afraid. You're not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Come on up here. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, Sister Amen. We've got all night. We can wait on these children. They're all school tomorrow. We'll take our time and just hear from them singing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. <laughs> He's already got the spirit. <laughs> Chapter 1 and verse 1 through Revelation 1 and verse number 20. That's past tense. And then the book of Revelation is things present. That begins in Revelation, the second chapter, in verse 1. And that goes through Revelation chapter 3 and verse number 22. That's right now. 
And then the book of Revelation is in things future, which begins in Revelation chapter 4 and verse number 1. John the Revelator wrote the book of Revelation under the inspiration of God Almighty. Amen. The book of Revelation is the apocalypse. It's the consummation of all things. For this portion of scripture that I have read in your hearing begins with things that are to be hereafter. All the way through Revelation chapter 22 and verse number 21. John said, I looked and behold, a door was opened in heaven. He's talking about the rapture of the church. And the first voice which I heard was as it were a trumpet talking with me. And no teaching in the word of God is so clear than this one which is Jesus Christ is coming back to this earth again. His coming is described in the New Testament alone 318 times. Think of it, that one in 20 scriptures deal with the coming of the Lord. This grand event is so eternally vital that God speaks of it over 300 times just in the New Testament. You may be here tonight and your mind may be gripped with fear of storms and perhaps nuclear warfare and wars and rumors of wars that it seems are in everyday headlines in our society. You wonder if the world's going to be destroyed by atomic suicide. And the book of 2 Peter says that the world will be destroyed someday, but I want you to know and get the revelation that it's not going to be destroyed by man. Right. But God's going to destroy this world in his own time. Come on. And before that happens, God is going to rapture his glorious church up out of this world. Amen. The gospel of Jesus Christ is the most beneficial news that the world has ever received. And I want to share with us uh, some of God's statements about the return of Jesus Christ tonight. Uh, when Jesus went back to heaven from the Mount of Olives, as the disciples watched, incredulously angels stood by and said to them, in the book of Acts, chapter number 1 and verse number 11, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye here gazing in the heavens? For well, this same Jesus uh, that has taken up from you into heaven shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven this day. And Paul wrote to the church at Colossia, in chapter 3 and verse number 4, when Christ, who is our life, yes. shall appear, then shall he also appear with him in glory. Yes. James chapter number 5 and verse number 8, he said, Be also patient, establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. Not only did James write about it, not only did Paul write about it, not only did Luke write about it in the Acts of the Apostles, but Peter also in 1 Peter 5 and 4 said that when the chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive crowns of glory that fadeth not away. I'm looking forward to that day. How about you? And John also, in 1 John chapter 2 and verse number 28, uh, John's challenge the holy living said, And now, little children, abide in him that when he shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. John also wrote in 1 John chapter number 3 and verse number 2, Beloved, now are we the sons of God. And it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, 
We shall be like kings.